Add. Do you want to show it? No, no, no. Stay okay. here, stay here because we need to, we need to start. And. Um, so we are starting the system of Advent. Certainly, it's a very good one for hope. This year, we are working with the topic of hope. And uh, let me remind you. Certainly in our lives there are little hopes. So for example, I have the hope that the baby will not come before Christmas. No? <laughs> or that I will be in good health and will not have morning sickness for the Thanksgiving. So we have those hopes and it's okay. There, are, there is, however, the big hope, the one that can illuminate and give meaning to your whole life. And that hope, and that's what the Pope, we already discussed about Pope Benedict in the Specialty, that is cyclical. Uh, it's not a hope that can be in our time, in our space. It has to come from uh, a hereafter. It has to come from something transcendent. So only God can give us the big hope. And which is that big hope? Well, that we are invited to heaven, to live in communion with God, to know Him and to love like He loves, and be loved fully when we will not resist at all to his love. That's a great hope. And this is a hope that gives meaning to every single moment of our lives. Something that God does not go beyond that, does not give meaning to what is before that. So if we don't have a meaning, something to die for, we don't have something to live for. So with that a reminder regarding hope, I want to propose you now to introduce you with Pope Benedict in the settings he calls, or it's translated that way. In Spain, in Spanish, we call the places. Circumstances in our lives where we can learn hope. So at the end of his encyclical, he speaks about prayer, suffering, and the judgment. And following that, what I want to do from now on is visit places, settings in our lives in which we can practice and learn hope. For example, family life. For example, work. For example, education of the children. Uh, things that are part of our lives. So how there we can learn and practice hope. So let's begin with prayer. That is one of the first uh, uh, a scenario in our life when we learn to have hope. Then, first, what is prayer? And by the way, I want this to be, in a certain way, a school of prayer for you. Not only for hope. No, we're discussing the topic of hope. And as you know, the schedule for this meeting is we have this talk, and then you have time for personal prayer, or prayer as couples. Okay? Or even to discuss, uh, as couples, the, the topic that or what has been inspiring or interesting for you. Or maybe things that you want to talk about and with a crazy family life, there is no way to find time to talk about it. You have oh, 15 minutes, but that's a treasure. <laughs> eh? Well, use 15 minutes, only the two of you, wow, that's a lot. Eh? And knowing that your kids are well cared for. Isn't it like heaven? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly. So then, uh, the 15 minutes between 10 and 10.15 are supposed for you to be on your own with Jesus. Okay. And that way we practice a little prayer. And then with all the insight that you are receiving during these uh, talks, well, learn a little how to pray and how to live in hope. So today I'm going to more read text of Benedict and St. John Paul II both of them, talking about prayer and giving us powerful insight, and I will give you this contact so you can read it, you can uh, and for sure with some questions and your family project. Okay, okay. so Pope Benedict says, for prayer to develop the power that it has, it must, on the one hand, be something very personal, an encounter between my intimate self and God. Let me connect this with baptism. What, what does the church do? What does a family do when brings a child to be baptized and give a name? When we give a name, we are saying, 
who the person is. Now, you remember when Adam and Eve were created before the creation of Eve in the second chapter of Genesis, God saw that the man was alone and it was not good for man to be alone. And then he created the animals and the animals passed before the man and the man named them. To give a name is to say who you are. So in baptism, we give a name, the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, that you as parents give a name. And uh, that name says who your child is, but certainly who your child is, is that you are giving them his identity, and his identity depends uh, essentially of his, he, of his or her relationship with you. No. So it's that relationship between the child and the parents that little by little uh, kind of forms identity and the heart of the child. Well, so now with Jesus, this is totally real because he is the son of God, but he's true man as well. How is the identity of Jesus as a human being uh, developed in his relationship with his parents, but mainly with God the Father? What is Jesus' prayer? Is his intimacy with the Father in which his own identity is revealed and is expressed? So prayer for us and the Catechism of the Catholic Church defines prayer just with my words. Being drawn into the prayer of Jesus. In a certain way, we never pray alone. We always pray with Jesus. And it's kind of to come into the prayer of Jesus and in that prayer of Jesus, at least his communion with the Father, learn who we are. And receive that name that God the Father is giving us. That name that is who we are. And second, we are who we are called to, to be. No? For example, our own vocation. My vocation, what is my mission in life, what I'm called to be, is that word that God is telling me. And again, I'm very nothing. It's the time in which we remember the promises of God. Why? Because he uh, fulfilled the promises he made in the New Testament about Jesus and his Paschal mystery. And now we have the promise of eternal life. And as he was faithful to fulfill this, now we are absolutely assured that he is going to fulfill the promises, the promise of eternal life for each of us. No? Okay, so we receive that in prayer. And this is why prayer has to be that very personal, an encounter between my intimate self and God, the living God. And I would add one uh, one thing that is connection. I remember it was a talk of a psychologist that uh, was saying which are the main needs of a, a person, no? affective needs. And one of them was connection. And that really called my attention because it was a time where I was lacking some kind of connection. <laughs> and then I couldn't understand perfectly what does it mean that I need to connect with someone else. Well, in prayer, we need to connect with God. How do we do, how do, we do that? Well, how do we connect with another person? I guess the first is to look eye to eye, no? to look for someone. It's the way we connect as human persons. And when God is uh, interacting with us, uh, he is treating us as human persons. So he knows, he created us. So, uh, if we just look at him intently, he will facilitate that we connect with him. Even we don't see him as we see each other, we don't hear his words as we hear each other, and so on. And in certain ways, kind of to learn a new language. Well, so the first idea to think about is that prayer has to be something very personal, an encounter between my intimate self, if not, prayer can be kind of superficial, and we don't want that. On the other hand, it must be constantly guided and enlightened by the great prayers of the church and of the saints. Common. By liturgical prayer, in which the Lord teaches us again and again how to pray properly. So it's first very personal and intimate. Second, it's also part of the prayer of the church, inspired in the tradition of prayer of the church, and also by the liturgy. And that's the second point that I want to bring today in a special way. 
the role of liturgy in our own lives. There is an old saying in the church, the way we celebrate is the way we pray. Sorry, we believe. Or the way we pray or we praise is the way we believe. Kind of the, the rule for liturgy is the rule of our faith. So a liturgy is also a place of prayer for us. And remember how Pope Benedict uh, discussed for a long time and then repeats any time he makes kind of summary. Uh, he remembers hope is never something individual. I have hope for me. No. True hope is something personal, something individual, but also uh, related to others. So when I have hope, I hope for me and for the others. And in family life, that's evident for you. You hope for you, you hope for your spouse, you hope for your children. Because if not, will not be a true hope. There will be something essential missing in that hope. No? Well, so uh, if prayer is a school of hope, certainly, and a place where we learn and practice hope, certainly makes sense that prayer will be marked with this dynamism of hope of for one and for all. Do you remember, are you fans of Tom Cruise? <laughs> you remember in the last movie of Mission Impossible, when I think he's his former wife because it was not like for her, so uh, she takes her own path. And then she says, uh, I think it's she or, or the other spy that they, they befriend in the, in the last movies. The big thing or the great thing of him is that he saves the, the many, but he also saves the one. Do you remember that, more or less? At the end when he is in the, after he almost died, trying to avoid that explosion and quantum and pollution and all that, when he is in bed recovering, and then they, they say, he saves all of the, 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 the whole people, but he also saves each one of them. Well, that's true. And, well, you are spirit, you understand that are your children, but every single of them. And which is the one that is taking more your attention, the one that needs it the most. And it's evident now, we don't need explanation. Well, so that's the dynamics of a Christian hope and prayer. Okay, so then uh, I really want you to think today how, and for example, the, we are in a very nice liturgical season, Advent. And I think uh, even for, for family life, for living the faith with the kids, it's very, um, it's very friendly, so to say, no? When I remember my night prayer with my mother and my siblings, and sometimes my father was around as well, uh, what comes the most are memories from the time of Advent. So for example, what we did at home. We have a little basket where we put, we will put what well, Spanish things. Here maybe you would put corn, but we did put is a garbanzo beans. No? Put the basket. When you do something good, a little sacrifice, just a, a, a good chore at home, for example, for me was a big deal to put in order the things in my room. The room I shared with my brother. No? And have or, or open my my wardrobe and put the things in order. Oh my well, so I would put a so in Christmas was the time when my wardrobe was the most orderly because I have been putting beans in the basket. There are other families that what they put is pieces of straw. Little straws. So then when Jesus is born, there are straws to make his uh, how do you call it? Cradle? Mm -hmm. Cradle? Cradle. 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 The, the cradle is uh, more comfortable for him. No? And then at the end of the day, we will do our examination of conscience and always a little reading of the life of Mary and then the, the meditations about the life, of Mary, of the life of Mary were driving into or leading us into the birth and also the Annunciation and how she went to visit Elizabeth and then she returned and then she went to other things. And then one of us would open one window in the calendar, in the Advent calendar. So December the 1st, who has been the, the nicest? Then I my mom then was smart enough to even the worst of us during the whole month open a couple of times a window. <laughs> well, 
I'm for sure Charlie Magic, magic for the kids, but you know Louis would freak out. A candle. Or <laughs> well, the candle of the Advent brief. No? Well, are little things that we can do with the kids. And really for the kids, uh, living Advent, especially in Spain, for us it's a big deal. The May guy are the ones bringing the presents. No? Uh, so it's not Santa, please. Uh, don't welcome Santa at home because he's not a Christian name. <laughs> it's totally pagan. So, no, it's about Jesus. Keep Christ in Christmas. No? Okay. So, so, the liturgy, the liturgy of the church, but also the liturgy of the family. So, what can you learn from the liturgy to inspire your own prayers? And by the way, uh, the liturgy of the Mass is so strongly inspired in the Bible, and there are so many literal quotations of the Bible. You know who is Scott Hahn. Have you read Wrong Sweet Home? Okay, so he's uh, telling there his conversion. And his conversion happened when one day he decided to attend a Catholic Mass because he has heard so many bad things about the Catholics and all of them are true. And I want to see them on my own. And then he sits there and what happens is that he that knows very well the Bible begins to see how the Bible is exemplified in front of him. And he is very, really uh, fascinating how he tells it because really he's leading he, all his discovery and how the things are opening his heart and his mind and wow, 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 wow. I got it converted, <laughs> no? Okay, so he expresses very well there. Uh, the liturgy is a great school of prayer. And for example, here in the, in the text, uh, before in number 34 of his encyclical, if you want to go and visit it, uh, he tells the story of a Vietnamese cardinal well, was made cardinal. He was made bishop, and very soon after, he was brought to jail. And then he spent in jail a long time. And really, the government was very upset because he would uh, cause a conversion of all his guards. So they began to change the guards weekly. <laughs> because if not his meekness, his charity, his patience, his endurance, his gentleness, would convert the guards, the, the guards, no? So, well, so he says sometimes, uh, well, he expresses the anxiety of I was alone, nobody to talk with, but even in those moments, I always had someone to talk to, someone to listen to that was God. And in those moments, there were times where I didn't know even what to say and how to pray. So I would go to the prayers of, it's written here. He tells us, that during his life, there were long periods when he, had, he was unable to pray and that he would hold fast to the text of the church's prayer, the Our Father, the Hail Mary, and the prayers of the liturgy. Prayer must always involve this intermingling of public and personal prayer. You can have this hand up later and work. Then uh, I want to, to rescue a uh, Really a text that I like a lot. St. John Paul II, you remember when he closed the door, the holy, the holy door of the Jubilee in Rome in 2001. What he did, he take a little re a break, rest now, because after the Jubilee that was so intense. No, he just gave us the document and said, okay, this is the plan from now on. Let's continue moving forward. Okay. So, well, that's Novo Millennium Neute. is, is the, his pastoral plan for, for the new millennium. No? And there he speaks about prayer, and I want to rescue that part. Well, text from that part. Um, and then he says, we know that prayer cannot be taken for granted. We have to learn to pray, as if it were learning this art ever anew from the lips of the Divine Master himself, like the first disciple. Lord, teach us to pray. I think about prayer a little like living in language. Because the way we interact with each other is out through our senses. Sight, uh, ear, uh, touch, all those things. We have that relationship. 
with CAD, that's not doesn't work. It works well. It works in a different way. No. So we need to learn uh, that language of the divine to communicate with us. No. And many times it happens that God has have some patterns to interact with us. And sometimes he makes that more evident. And then when he does not mm, as evident as other times, however, we can recognize the pattern. You remember when the miracle is fishing after the resurrection of Christ? Why John says, is the Lord? Because he immediately connects the amount of fish with the miracles fishing that he left before. So he can say, it's the Lord. No? So many times in our lives, God has kind of patterns so we can recognize them. In the same way that you know who is, who is walking at home. How do you know? Well, because you know of your children, and you know how they step and how they, they sound like, no? Even when they are fighting and yelling, you know who is fighting against whom, and most likely who is guilty. Well, um, Prayer develops that conversation with Christ, which makes us his intimate friends. It's the same idea of Benedict before, how it's a very personal from the innermost of our hearts. Uh, brought by the Holy Spirit, this reciprocity opens us to Christ and in Christ to the contemplation of the Father. Learning this Trinitarian shape of Christian prayer and living it fully, above all, in the liturgy the summit and source of the Christ's life, but also personal experience, is the secret of a truly vital Christianity. So you see how it again connects with the liturgy. Um, and I, I quote that I really love, and I finish, I end with this. It would be wrong to think that ordinary Christians can be content with a shallow prayer that is unable to fill their whole life. Especially in the face of the many trials to which today's world subjects faith, they would be not only mediocre Christians, but Christians at risk. Think what about this? Especially in the face of the many trials to which today's world subjects faith, they would be not only mediocre Christians, but Christians at risk. So go on pray. And go to that school where you can learn and practice hope. And you have two questions for reflection okay? and the family project. And mainly it's about what I told you about the Advent liturgy of the family. So how you celebrate Advent in your family. And that is, do um, you remember how did you celebrate Advent in your own families? Well, I do. And what I, I'm telling you is, what you do now with your kids, that will be a memory for their whole life. Bring in the light, bring in joy, and bring in hope to their lives any time in their life. The older I grow, the more I live of those memories. And those memories bring me joy, hope. Pray or to talk about things, or that is your time. Enjoy it.